Recently, I was asked by an advertising agency to shoot extreme close-up shots of mold for a detergent commercial. They wanted the mold to look like landscapes, with helicopter shots over fields of golden spores. Close-up so tight, the spores would look like fields of sunflowers. But a single spore is not even visible to the naked eye. I realized pretty quickly, to get these shots, I was going to have to build some stuff myself. This is a compilation of some of the shots I took for the commercial. Later, I'll explain how I shot them, and how to build the macro bellows that made these shots possible. I used two different lenses for this project, a Samyang or Rokinon 85mm and a Carl Zeiss high speed 25mm prime. Both had very long extension bellows that I made myself. They cost next to nothing and were relatively simple to make. First, I cut a round piece of sheet rubber, then cut out a smaller circle from its center, stitched all the centers together first, then stitched all the outsides together. That became my bellows. The more circles of rubber you cut and stitch together, the further you will be able to extend the lenses, allowing you to focus closer to the subject. This type of bellows also allowed me to shift the center lens position from the center of the sensor, counteracting the very acute keystoning effect you get when your subject area is only about a millimeter squared. The lens can also swing, counteracting the incredibly shallow depth of field. The flexibility of the bellows made finding my shot surprisingly simple. This bellows was attached to my Van Diemen PL Atten mount adapter. It costs more than the camera that I was going to shoot with, so I lathed this extra adapter in my machine shop so I didn't have to put holes in my Van Diemen mount adapter. I cut a round of sheet aluminum and glued it inside the rubber, then bolted the adapter in from the back. This is the bolt coming through the adapter. The bellows for the EF Samyang was easier to make. I had a shorter bellows for this lens as I also used a set of Minolta macro extension rings. The lens mount was a cheap EF to Micro Four Thirds adapter that I bought for about $20. I drilled holes in the mount and bolted them in from the back. I threaded the holes to take the bolts, but if you don't have the tools to tap holes, you could just drill a straight hole and use nuts and bolts. I used a reasonably priced 50mm bar system that mounted to the bellows. The bars are designed to mount to the base of the camera, but the Blackmagic also has threaded receptors on its top side, allowing me to get my lens close to the petri dish. This is a Micro Four Thirds to C-mount adapter, and this is a Minolta to C-mount adapter. Then I placed my Minolta extension tubes, then the rubber bellows, then the EF adapter, and finally the EF Samyang 85mm. I used the wider 25mm to get a fuller shot, but was able to get close using the macro bellows. The wide angle also helped widen what would be a very shallow depth of field, so most of the frame would be in focus. I used the Samyang 85mm for the micro close-ups, utilizing the swing and shift to maintain a focus across the frame. This was all shot using an intervalometer for timed single frame exposures. I used the internal intervalometer in the Blackmagic Cinema camera. It is easy to use and well designed, and has a surprisingly wide range of frame speeds. 
For the effect of the camera floating over the mold, I moved the petri dish rather than the camera. Each shot required a different frame rate, ranging from one frame every 20 seconds to one frame every 10 minutes. For the faster frame rates, I used a Seven Oaks programmable motorized pan head. But the slower frame rates were too slow, even for the slowest setting on the pan head. So we had to do them by hand, using a Manfrotto geared head. Long ago, I had replaced the Manfrotto plastic handles with the metal handles from my old Worrell head. We put a wire marker made from a paper clip and a strip of masking tape around the handle's collar. We rotated the head till I found the frame I wanted to start with. Then, marked the starting point on the masking tape. We then rotated the head and framed up the end shot. Then, we marked this on the tape. The shot was supposed to run for 72 frames, so we calculated 72 increments from the first to the last mark. We started rolling and kept an eye on the frame counter. When the camera exposed the frame, we moved the pan gear by one increment. The result was a remarkably smooth move. Because the look the agency requested was landscape and fields, I lit the mold as if it were daylight, with a quarter sun rising behind the subject. It was impossible to light a one millimeter square area with any focused detail, so I reproduced the sun in the sky with a frosted plexi sheet in front of a two by two foot LED bank light. I hope this film has been useful should you ever need to shoot a detailed subject smaller than a pinhead.